you need to know all about oxidative phosphorylation. So watch this video to learn exactly what is going on. Now, oxidative phosphorylation is the final stage of aerobic respiration, and this is taking place on the cristae, so on the inner mitochondrial membrane. So I've started to draw a diagram for you. Let's just kind of figure out where we are. So this is the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So this is the membrane that is folded into those cristae. Then we've got a space here, which is called the intermembrane space. And then we've got the outer membrane. So this is the folded inner membrane and this is the outer membrane of the mitochondria. Now, what's going to happen? Well, remember all of those reduced coenzymes. So NADH and FADH. Let's start with those. So we've been making NADH and FADH kind of throughout the other stages of aerobic respiration. So glycolysis, we made NADH. Um, Krebs cycle, we made NADH and FADH. The link reaction made NADH. And these reduced coenzymes are going to carry the hydrogen to the inner mitochondrial membrane. So they're carrying the hydrogen. These reduced coenzymes are then going to be oxidized. Now, we remember that oxidation is loss. And in this case, it's the loss of hydrogen. So these reduced coenzymes will lose that hydrogen. And the hydrogen is going to split into protons or hydrogen ions and electrons. Now, the electrons are going to be transferred to what we call the electron transport chain. And the hydrogen ions, we'll get to those later, but they are going to be pumped into the intermembrane space from the matrix. In fact, I'll just label matrix down here. So the reduced coenzymes carry the hydrogen to the inner mitochondrial membrane. They are oxidized or dehydrogenated because they lose hydrogen. And the hydrogen is going to split into a proton and an electron. The electrons pass to the electron transport chain. And what we say is the electrons are transferred along the electron transport chain in a series of redox reactions. So obviously, when this um, electron transport protein loses the electron, we say it's oxidized. The next protein gains the electron, so it's reduced, and so on. So they're transferred along the electron carriers in the electron transport chain in a series of redox reactions. Now, this releases energy, and that energy is used to pump the protons which also came from that hydrogen, pump the protons from the matrix into the intermembrane space. OK, so the energy from the transfer of electrons is used to pump the protons into the intermembrane space. What you've now got is a proton gradient, which we can also call an electrochemical gradient. We've basically got a much higher concentration of protons in the intermembrane space than this side of the membrane, which is in the matrix. So the protons will start to diffuse down that proton gradient or down the electrochemical gradient. And they can't diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer. The only way they can get through is to diffuse through a channel in the ATP synthase enzyme. So this is ATP synthase. It's an enzyme that's embedded in that inner mitochondrial membrane. It allows the protons to diffuse through it down their proton gradient. We call this chemiosmosis. Okay, it's the diffusion of those protons down the electrochemical gradient, and it drives the formation of ATP by the ATP synthase enzyme. Basically, as they diffuse through that enzyme, it causes part of the protein to rotate and that allows the enzyme to make ATP from ADP and PI. Okay, 
we're nearly there. We've had the transfer of electrons down the electron transport chain, the pumping of protons into the intermembrane space, the formation of the proton gradient, chemiosmosis driving the production of ATP from ADP and PI. The last thing we need to mention is oxygen. So oxygen is required for oxidative phosphorylation because oxygen acts as the final electron acceptor. Or you can call it the terminal electron acceptor. So once the electrons reach the last protein in the electron transport chain, the electrons will be passed to oxygen, which acts as the final electron acceptor. So it's going to accept electrons. It's also going to accept protons. So the protons that diffuse back down that through that channel in the ATP synthase enzyme, they are also going to be accepted by oxygen. So, in fact, let's do four here, so it's actually going to balance nicely. So oxygen is going to accept electrons that have reached the end of the electron transport chain and protons that have just moved back into the matrix through the ATP synthase enzyme. And when oxygen does that, we're going to end up with, just trying to make sure it balances nicely, yeah, four hydrogens, two oxygens. Yeah, we're going to end up with water. So the end product, we've made water. We've also made lots of ATP. This is the stage of aerobic respiration that yields the most ATP and the most kind of recent um, prediction for how much ATP is about 32 to 33 molecules of ATP in total per molecule of glucose with the whole of aerobic respiration. But this is the stage that yields the most. So that's really important. This is the stage that directly uses oxygen as the final electron acceptor. And this is the stage that produces water. And that is oxidative phosphorylation. Without oxygen, this would stop because without oxygen, the electrons cannot be passed to oxygen because there's no final electron acceptor, which means they cannot pass along the electron transport chain. So the transfer of electrons will stop, which means the protons will not be pumped into the intermembrane space and then ATP will not be produced because you won't have that proton gradient. I hope that you have found this really useful.